Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about temperature conversions again. This time, we're going to allow the user to enter the temperature and specify any scale they want, either Fahrenheit, Celsius, or Kelvin. And, and yes, I realize at quick glance what this title slide looks like. Okay, it wasn't intentional, wasn't intentional. Today's question comes from Daisy in Atlanta, Georgia, one of my Platinum members. Daisy says, I loved your lesson on converting between Fahrenheit and Celsius, but that assumes you're always getting readings in one or the other. In my lab, we can sometimes get temperatures in any of the three scales, and we have to be able to convert it to the other ones. So is there a way to have it so the user specifies the scale when they add the value to the table? Yes, of course, Daisy. There's lots of ways you can do it. Um, I prefer putting the value in a separate field from the scale. I've seen a lot of times where people try to do it like 32F in the same field, like a, a short text field, and that just causes problems. So let me show you how to set it up the right way, the way that I'd like to do it. There's, of course, there's a million ways to do it. I can just show you how to put the Lego pieces together and, and you can rearrange them in whatever way you want. All right, before we get started, let's talk prerequisites. If you haven't watched the original Fahrenheit to Celsius video, go watch this first. I cover a lot of stuff in there that I'm not going to repeat today. Also, go watch my video on the switch function. This is an alternative to nested if functions. We're going to use this to say, okay, if the scale is Fahrenheit, use this equation. If it's Celsius, use this equation. If it's Kelvin, use this equation. And that It's easier to use switch than it is to use multiple nested if functions. So definitely go watch this video and go watch this video on making a value list combo box. We're going to make one of these so the user can drop it down and pick F, C, or K right inside of a form. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. You'll find links down below. You can click on, go watch those and come on back. I consider this to be an expert level video. What does that mean? Well, I've got multiple levels for my courses. I got beginner which is you don't know a whole lot, you just started learning access. Then I got expert is the next level, which you've been using it a while, you're past the basics, you're getting into functions and formulas and things with moving parts and molecular structures and atomic weight, no, you know what I mean. And then after that, I've got developer, all right, which is VBA coding and all that stuff. So this is expert, it kind of falls in the middle. We're gonna use some cool functions and stuff in this class. And before we get started, I got a little trivia for you. I love trivia, I'm a, I'm a trivia nerd, sorry. So. You can forward passes if you want to, but I, I, I live for trivia. Um, one thing, and I just learned this recently, Kelvin is not measured in degrees Kelvin. It's just Kelvin. So you don't say 30 degrees Kelvin. It's just 30 Kelvin. All right? I used to always get that wrong. And this one, a few people posted in comments on the other video. Uh, the only temperature that's the same between Fahrenheit and Celsius is negative 40. It's the same on both scales. And yes, I've known this all my life. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, and I spent a lot of time up in Toronto. And I was up in Toronto at one point where it was negative 40. It was so cold, my car wouldn't start. So that was fun. And this is a quote. I believe it's Neil deGrasse Tyson. I, I should probably look it up, but I, I'm lazy. Um, he said, basically, Fahrenheit is a scale that's based on humans, right? Zero to 100. That means a human will find zero pretty cold and, and 100 pretty hot. Celsius is based on water, how water behaves. It freezes at zero and it boils at 100, right? And then Kelvin is based on molecules, where zero, absolute zero, is no molecular motion. So I thought that was pretty cool. Right? I love whoever came up with this meme. This is all over the internet, right? Fahrenheit, zero is really cold outside, 100 is really hot outside. <laughs> Celsius, fairly cold outside, dead <laughs> at 100. And then Kelvin, zero, dead, 100, dead. So <laughs> I love this one. All right, one more bit of trivia and I'm done. Celsius was originally named centigrade from the Latin centum, cent meaning 100, right? From the inventor Anders Celsius, oin 1742. Oin, let's fix that, on, in, in 1742. Good old PowerPoint slide failed me there. Uh, it was an inverse scale at first, so 100 was actually colder than zero. I don't know why he did that, but okay. So after his death, scientists flipped it because it just wasn't intuitive. And then in 1948, it was officially renamed Celsius in his honor. Today, it is the most commonly used system in the world, with the notable exception of here in the United States, because we're dumb. Yeah, I said it. Celsius is what we should use. And metric system. And, well, the old system's dumb. Come on, USA, get with the rest of the world here. 
Oh, okay. All right. One more thing. Yeah, I actually asked Chat GPT if there were any other scales. Because I was putting this together, I'm like, is there anything else we might want to convert to? But no, not really. Temperatures are pretty much Fahrenheit, Celsius, Kelvin, and scientific communities. There are some other ones. Here they are. You can read up on these. Um, I didn't know Newton made his own scale. That's pretty cool. What what didn't Newton do? Newton was like amazing. <laughs> Oh, and I use ChatGPT to generate this picture and, of course, leave it up to ChatGPT to get the number of fingers wrong. Look at that. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five fingers, and there's going to be a thumb under there somewhere. So they still... They, their image generation with Dolly is looking really good. I mean, that's amazing, but they still can't get fingers right, and they still, once in a while, don't get text right. So the AI is... It, it's closing in on perfection, but it's, it's got a little bit ways to go still. So. All right, this is my sample database that I built. This is what we're going to have when we're finished, right? You type in the, the reading value, pick the scale, and you'll get the three conversions for you there. So if I put in here, if I put in negative 40, and I put in Fahrenheit, I get those calculations automatically for you. That's what we're going to be building in today's video. All right, but let's start with a blank copy of my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can get a copy off my website if you want to. And just like the last video, let's create a table. Yeah, I probably should have copied it from the other one, but it takes two seconds, right? Reading ID, that's my auto number. Now, here I'm gonna go with temp value. And I'm not gonna just call it temp because sometimes people might confuse that with temper, you know, temporary. They might end the temperature. Temperature is a long word to type out. I think temp value is good. I like to keep my variable names and my field names short, but not too short. They still wanna be meaningful. Don't use just value. Value by itself is a keyword, right? A, a reserved word. You don't want to use just value. So I think temp value works out just fine. Okay. This will be a number. And again, just like last time, I'm going to make this a double. And I explained why last time. I'm going to get rid of the value. I don't want a default value. And I'm going to make required yes. That way they have to type it in or they can't put in a record. Okay. And I talk about this a lot more in my video where I talk about required properties. Um, with, with databases that have normal information, like first name, last name, address, phone number, I try not to make things required because employees will generally just put in garbage if something's required. But in a particular case like this, where there's literally two values, right? A temperature and the scale, uh, it's required. You got to have it. Okay. All right. And next we're going to make the scale. So it's going to be the temperature scale. And again, you could just use the word scale here, but I'm just going to stay consistent, make a temp value and temp scale. Okay. Now, this is going to be short text. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, guys. You could make a separate temperature scale table, right? You got record one, two, and three Celsius, Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit Kelvin. In situations where there's a possibility in the near future of adding more items or deleting items, then yes, I would definitely make this a related record. But... I think in today's society, those three options are pretty much it. And I can't see another temperature scale coming along in the future. You know, it's not something like a shipping method, right? You got UPS, FedEx, uh, United States Postal Service. I could see another player coming along, right? We've already got Amazon delivery. You've got uh, you know, DHL. So that's a situation where you would definitely want to have a related table for it. For this, I don't see it changing in my lifetime. So I'm just going to make it a letter. Right, you literally store an F, C, or K in the table. There really isn't much of a difference whether this value is numeric or text. And in all honesty, it, it actually makes some of the programming easier because you can refer to F or C or K in the equations instead of having to go back to the table and figure out, okay, well, is this number one, two, or three? Those IDs can change, you know what I'm saying? So this actually makes this easier by storing the F, C, or K here. But again, don't put this in one field. Because then you got to make sure the user enters it right. And you got to make sure the right character is a letter. It's just, no, two separate fields. I say this in my Access Beginner 1 class. It's easier to make multiple fields and put stuff together later than it is to try to separate stuff. Consider an address, for example, right? You got address, street, city, zip code, country. And some people even break up the street address into the number, the street, and the street type, like avenues, whatever. Okay. It's much, much easier if you need all of that detail to make all of those separate fields than to try to make it one field and break it apart later. Even something like name, right? First name, middle name, last name. It's much easier if those are three separate fields. If you want to put them together, you just concatenate them than it is to try to pull those apart. Anyways, I digress. 
Now, this is one of those rare instances where I'm going to use field size. I don't use this much because there really is no major benefit to limiting the field size. Um, unless, in this case, you literally only want one and only one piece of text in there, one character. That's it. You can't put in two. Okay? And we're going to force the users to have to pick from a combo box, but if you want to put a validation rule in here to make sure that this is either an FC or a K and nothing else, we can do it with a validation rule. What would that be? I'm going to zoom in here, Shift F2. All right, it's going to look like this. In, that's a special keyword, in F C K, all in quotes and all in parentheses. See how that looks? That's a validation rule. That means that your answer, whatever your, your data that's going into this field is, has to be in this list. F, C, or K. That's it. No other options are allowed. And it's not case sensitive, which really doesn't matter. Okay? If you want, if the, if the users are entering stuff in lowercase and you want to force it to display with a capital, you can always U case it later. That's not a big deal. As far as the data is concerned in the table, upper lowercase is irrelevant. Okay? And if you want to put some validation text in here, you can. All right? Must be F, C, or K or whatever you want it to say. All right, I got a whole separate video on validation rules. You can go watch this video if you want to learn more. You'll find a link down below. All right, but that's it for this table. Let's save it. And again, I'll call this my reading T. Primary key, sure. And again, if you want to add other fields in here, like a timestamp and notes and who took the reading and all that, that's up to you. This is all we need for class to get, to do what we're trying to do, right? Let's put some data in it. All right, we got the value and the scale. Now, again, I always put some temporary data in it when I'm building a database because it's easier to build forms and stuff and queries and things like that if you got some sample data in here. All right, so I'll put in here 0F, 0C, and 0K. Those are some good benchmarks, right? How about 100F, 100C, 100K? And then maybe some stuff in the middle like 75 Fahrenheit and 20 Celsius and 50 Kelvin. Okay, looks good, looks good. Save it, close it. And now we are all ready and set to build our query, which we will do in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel for part two. Members can watch it right, well, soon, not right now, because I haven't posted it yet, unless you're watching this in the future. So yeah, very soon. I'm gonna be recording it in just a few minutes. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. See you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. 
Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members, Get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond Sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a Sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.